to introduce Dr. Yan Xiao. She's with the University of Adelaide and she's a chemical engineer. She's a 2020 young tall poppy. And I mean, what she's concerned about is imagine a planet Earth that's depleted of fossil fuels with severe greenhouse effects. What will happen in the future if we do nothing? Okay, thank you very much for your uh, kind introduction. Um, first, I want to say a f uh, just one sentence to the young kids in this room that I have the best job in my uh, in, uh, in in the whole entire world. <laughs> okay, uh, there's a hesitate is because uh, I'm not sure uh, in my world this is the best job that I have. Maybe it's not the best job that y you want to have. But anyway, the reason that I think my job is the best is that I get to play Legos every day. <laughs> and the Legos is slightly different with the Legos that the kids are playing now, is that I play the Legos on the computer. That my Legos are actually atom. At so I build different models, but with different atoms. Now I'm going to show you how I can achieve by building those atom Legos and why I think this problem is so important for us. So uh, the biggest challenge that I see for our current world is actually the climate change. And the reason for that is because of the burning of fossil fuels and the emission of the carbon dioxide. So earlier this year that IPCC, they released a report saying that, well, if we do not do anything now, then the world will become, well, the Earth will uh, reach a tipping point. And after that point, there's nothing we can do to save this planet. When I was young, I was really worried about this problem. I don't know why. Maybe because of these this magazines that I read. <laughs> but that worries me so long, so much. So I started to think, well, how can we address this? At the beginning, I thought, mm, maybe we just mop out, out of the CO2 from the atmosphere. Maybe that saved the problem. But then when I, uh, after I graduated, I become a PhD student, and I get to know many of other research fields, I know, I, tr uh, I start to realize there are better ways of doing this. Now I'll show you uh, how this uh, is working. So over here, it shows the different types of energy. Something uh, fundamental about energy is that it cannot be created, and it cannot be diminished. It can only transform from one format to another format. So speaking of the fossil fuels that we are using now, the, the, the function of the fossil fuel is to give us energy. And how are those energies coming from? Fossil fuels were, f uh, were buried underground for millions and millions of years. Uh, and they, uh, the buried things were plants, plants animal bodies. And uh, under the high temperature and high temp uh, pressure, they transformed to fossil fuel. So where does the energy to that plant and animals uh, were originated at the, at the beginning? Uh, it was from uh, sunlight. So sunlight, after sunlight, there's a photosynthesis in plants. So plants have the energy, animals eat the plants, and they have the energy, and they get buried, and then transformed to fossil fuel. So sun is the ultimate source of the energy. So many people realize this, is that not just myself. That's why we have so many solar panels, wind farms, <laughs> generating this clean, green electricity, elect which is really good. And then the problem with this is that those renewable energy, they are intermittent. This term is that when we need them, uh, well, they can only be generated when the nearest resource. Like during the uh, day, we have sunlight, then we have the solar electricity. When there's wind blowing, we have the wind electricity. But when it's during night or it's no wind, there's no electricity. It's like the rainwater. Some days there's so many rain so that we have to collect them and keep them. And when the water runs out, we, 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 we use the water in the water tank. So similarly to this electricity, they're intermittent. So we have to store them in some way. Showing here is the most uh, well traditional way of storing them. 
in batteries. Uh, this is good, very good. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, our uh, government, as a government, bought this uh, very large Tesla batteries to store the electricity and uh, release them when we need them. Uh, but the problem with the uh, battery is that their storage has a limit. So for this type, uh, this amount of electricity, we need uh, this um, amount of the battery to store it. Can we have a magic pocket that about this size, but we can store this type of this amount of energy? Now I'm showing you the, the magic pocket, which is those, those small molecules. If we put electricity into these small molecules, then we can convert them to renewable fuels. I'll show you later how that's done. So uh, my research is then focused on battery, uh, better un uh, battery materials and the better catalyst material that can realize this conversion. I need to speed up a little bit. So uh, during all those processes, we need catalyst material. A very simple metaphor of how catalyst material is helping us is that suppose we want to climb a mountain on this side of the mountain is the reactant, the small molecules, water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. On the other side is the fuels. So everything needs to climb a mountain, which uh, climb a mountain needs energy, which, which means the energy is wasted. By the catalyst, we are drilling a tunnel. So we don't have to go over the mountain. We can go through the mountain. That's the significant role of a catalyst. catalyst a material and I'm building models, atom by atom level models for these catalyst materials and then investigate what kind of tunnel that it can create. That's my job and I have my collaborators. Uh, well, uh, my job uh, after I create, I create these uh, uh, models, I will send them to supercomputers to calculate how the tunnel looks like. And then after that, I will inform my collaborators who are doing experiments. They will actually synthesize this catalyst material and test their performance. So if there's really something really good, we will ask, um, uh, we will, we will ask our industry partners to see if they can make that happen in real life. Okay, that's uh, what I want to share today. Okay.